All right, now we are gonna work on some tortillone blending. Tortillone, I believe is a French word. And a tortillon is a tool we like to use when we're using charcoal or graphite materials. So we are actually gonna make our own, and this is where your paper towel comes into play. I would like for you to rip off a nice little rectangle off of your paper towel. It's okay if it's not perfect. Something like this. Here, let me put it on the tape. Something like that. And then you're simply going to just roll it up and then now that you have this little stump of paper here we're going to use it to blend our charcoal together this is great because paper is super fibre uh, super it's super um, grainy so you get like a nice little rough texture and also your fingers don't get as dirty so if you don't like when your fingers get like this this is the technique for you. So again, you're going to put down just a little bit of charcoal. And now we're gonna hold this like a pencil and make sure the paper is touching. And you kind of just do circular little motions if you want. And that's kind of light, so I'm gonna add some more so you guys can see it. Again, pressing very lightly. And there we go. Now you can see it a little better. And when you look closely, um, you can see that it's a little bit rougher than your finger. You can see more of the paper grains and patterns that are from the paper on here. Um, and again, this is good if you're like wanting to um, draw a tree and maybe you want the tree bark to look a little, uh, to look a little rough or um, or if you like that style of art, if you like when your um, art looks a little bit more rough, if you like that grainy texture, again, this is a great technique for you here. And now you can see it a little more. And it's fun kind of just going in backward, forwards motions. And it's nice because you can kind of drag out the charcoal if you want to go to lighter areas but not want to apply some you can just drag it out to work on some eraser blending so um, I want my eraser is obviously kind of dirty so first things first your erasers are probably brand new and not dirty at all so you don't need to do this but a good technique is you see I'm gonna clean off all this right here and I do that by rubbing on the paper I have a little post-it note you could do it on the back of this if you really wanted to but you see how it cleans it off because I don't want any new smudges getting on my work unless I want to but in this case I do not want to that's pretty good a little more and nice clean edge for the most part there you can see it better nice clean edge okay so similar to finger blending and the tortillon blending we are going to first put down some charcoal so I'm gonna again use the thinner piece and I wanna put a little bit more. I'm using the side if you notice, like our technique up at the top. Okay, that's good. And again, I like to do swirling motions. And it kinda creates a nice little swirly pattern. Um, eraser blending is great if you want to create highlights so highlights are like pieces of white the whitest white in areas that have value which is darkness or lightness depending but yeah so if you want to get highlights like eraser blending is great if you're trying to make hair especially if like someone has blonde hair so we'll pretend that's their hair and you can use the eraser to go in and create those little 
sort of highlights. And when you create that stroking motion, it looks like you have hair. I mean, that looks like hair to me. <laughs> so yeah, this is a great technique to go back into something and create those highlights. Like in eyes or, I don't know, in skin and sun. It doesn't really matter where you see those highlights. But if I want to turn this into a little rain cloud, I can add some more there. I can go back in and then blend it with my eraser. See, look how nice it's turning into. Tools are your friends, people. Tools are your friends. And look, now it looks like a nice little rain cloud. Alrighty, now we're gonna put our skills to the test. So I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step drawing of how to do an eye with charcoal. So step one, um, I want you to use your thin piece of charcoal and pretty much in the center of your paper, you don't wanna go too far to the right or too far to the left. We are going to draw a circle. Now, notice how I'm not pressing down hard and doing one big line. I'm doing, I'm hatching, which is I am doing a lot of small lines to create my shape. This is how artists like to sketch. We like to do small lines so our drawing comes out the way we want to and we don't have to erase and go back and get frustrated. So small lines, small quick lines work the best. Okay, and there's my circle. Next, we are going to again use our small piece of charcoal and we are going to draw a, whatchamacallit, a semicircle, yes, a semicircle or like an arch over the eye to make our top lid. Now you're gonna start all the way down here at the bottom. And again, I'm doing small, sorry, my laundry just went off, small quick lines. And down like that. So you want something kind of like this. Notice how the lines straight across pretty much match up. All right, our next step is going to be to draw the lower lid. Now notice how this top lid is attached to our circle. This bottom lid is gonna be a little bit off like that. So we're gonna start right about here. And work our way up. Like so. So now you're seeing that with basic shapes, circle and arches, you can make an eye. Okay, now we are going to connect the lower or the lower lid to the upper lid. And doing that, we are just going to kind of make like a little, I don't know what to call it, but that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> okay, now we are going to draw the crease for the eye. And that is gonna be another arch. We are going to just draw right up here, right on top, almost pretty much matching our top lid, like that. Okay, now we are going to use our thicker piece of charcoal to go in and darken some of our lines before we add new ones. So I would like for us to darken this top lid. We wanna make it a little bit more profound and the thick piece of charcoal does a good job doing that for us. You can blow it away. So you see how that's popping out more? And we're gonna do the same thing for our bottom lid as well. It's almost like the eyes wearing eyelash. Okay, now we're gonna go in and draw some eyelashes. So, eyelashes, if you notice, are pretty much 
flowy or swoopy looking lines. So we're gonna start with some smaller ones here and you kinda of wanna swoop your hand as you make them. Kind of fast and free flowing. Kinda of something like that. This guy got a little bit too long on me so we can go back in and erase. And now we are gonna go over those lines we just did with some of our thicker charcoal again. You kind of want to still follow that swooping kind of line. And then you're going to go in with your thin piece and kind of do smaller lines as well. And the, we'll start off at the top. In between the big lines. And then we can put more on the bottom. And these lines are kind of... A little bit like that and you don't want to have the same kind of length you kind of want to vary it because if you look at your own eyelashes especially the ones underneath your eye and above your eye they are kind of all different kinds of lace uh, laces ugh, lengths none of them are the same so we can get some more bigger ones up here and then it's gonna start to fade down here can even do some right here and yeah just put some eyelashes in your eye okay now here comes the really fun part now we're gonna start drawing the actual pupil itself so we're gonna start with our um, thin piece of charcoal and we're gonna draw another little circle in here Okay, so that's going to be our pupil. You're going to try to bullseye it as well as you can, and I'm just going to fill it in for now. Okay. And now we're going to go in with our thick piece, and this is going to be where our darkest dark is for our eye. And we're going to put it right up at the top here. Now notice, I'm leaving a white little space right here. We all have it in our eyes. I want to make sure that we don't color over it and we leave it. And again, I want to go in a little more on this guy here, on my pupil, I guess I think that is. And again, I'm doing kind of swirly kind of motions. <sighs> Blow it in away. And then I'm going to go back in with my bigger piece and kind of make this a little dark up here and then I'm gonna use my finger to bring some of this charcoal down you see I'm gonna bring some of it down then I already have some charcoal already left over so I'm gonna bring it to the other side and then I say to myself well this is too dark up here I want to make it a little lighter so I will go in and eraser blend Oops, let's see, there we go. And not only is it picking it up, but I'm able to blend it down as well. And I still kinda wanna go in, this should be my darkest part of the eye, the pupil. So I'm gonna go back in. I don't wanna use a thick piece of uh, charcoal because I feel like I don't have as much control as I do with this thin piece. <sighs> there we go, much better. And then, I'm gonna go in here and kind of erase a little bit away of the eye. So you notice I didn't erase the line completely. I still left a little. Because if it was all white, it would look like this. the iris was part of the actual eye and we don't want that. So just leave a little there. If you erase too much, you can always just go back in, do a couple little lines like that. And there you have it. You have a realistic looking eye.